Hey, 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 East Coast Pete with you again. Welcome to my show for drummers only. Today we're going to talk about Mr. Levon Helm. He was born in 1940 and he died in 2012. An American musician and actor, he's best known as a drummer and vocalist for the band. He appeared as Loretta Lynn's father in Coal Miner's Daughter. He also had parts in movies Shooter and The Right Stuff. Born in Elaine, Arkansas, he grew up in Turkey Scratch, a hamlet of Marvell, Arkansas. His parents were cotton farmers and music lovers. Levon played guitar and drums at eight years old. He saw Bill Monroe and his bluegrass boys when he was six and firmly decided to become a musician. Arkansas in the 40s and 50s was steeped in musical styles such as blues and bluegrass country and western and R&B. Helm heard all of these on the Grand Ole Opry on radio stations WSM and WLAC out of Nashville. Sonny Boy Williams II, harmonic guitarist and singer along with Robert Lockwood Jr. are mentioned in Helm's autobiography. This wheel's on fire. Levon Helm and the story of the band. Helm describes Williamson's drummer James Peck Curtis and Helm tried to style his playing after these shows. Helm was around for the earliest performances of Elvis Presley, Conway Twitty and Bo Diddley and Ronnie Hawkins. At 17, Helm was playing in clubs and bars locally. He was invited to join Hawk's band The Hawks are popular in the South, but also in Canada. After graduating high school in 1958, Helms became a hawk for the first time as a full-time drummer. The Hawks moved to Toronto and were signed by Roulette Records in 1959. There were singles and a few hits. In the early 60s, Hawkins had assembled an all Canadian, Canadian, sorry, Canadian, yeah, lineup with Helms, Robbie Robertson on lead guitar, Rick Danko on bass, pianist Richard Manuel, and organist Garth Hudson, all of whom were multi instrumentalists. And in 1963, they said, goodbye to Ronnie Hawks, but continued to play as Levon and the Hawks. They were touring bars in Texas, Arkansas, in Canada, and summer gigs at the New Jersey Shore. In the mid-60s, acoustic folk artist Bob Dylan wanted to perform electric rock, and he asked the Hawks to back him. Fans nearly destroyed the Hawks, and Dylan for abdicating his folk throne. Helm was freaked. He quit being the Hawks drummer for two years. The Hawks and Dylan carried on with pickup drummers, but Helm would return to rejoin the group, which Dylan had renamed the band. The band toured Europe with Dylan, and it seemed that the more fans booed, the happier Dylan was. Dylan and the band settled in Woodstock in a big pink house that was turned into a recording studio. It's not pink anymore, it's been painted, so don't go looking for it there. Demos were made both with Dylan and without. These recordings were widely bootlegged and Dylan withdrew from public in 1975. The basement tapes were released. Rick Danko and Richard Manuel were writing lyrics, as was Dylan. 
Albert Grossman, Dylan's manager, worked out a recording contract for the band. They could release their own recordings and continue to back Dylan. The contract was with Capitol, but the band's contract stipulated that they could release recordings on other labels. This was not the first Grossman contract that was so favorable to artists. Planet Waves with Dylan was released on multiple labels, as was the band's The Last Waltz and music from Big Pink, which made them stars. Manuel's voice was deteriorating, and Robertson's songs were focusing on the South, so Levon Helm's voice worked well with Danko singing high harmony. Manuel would occasionally switch to drums while Helm played mandolin and guitar, and even bass when Danko played the fiddle. Helm stuck with the band until late in 76, and the film The Last Waltz about the final band concerts and Levine criticized Robertson, who produced the film. Helm released a solo album, Levon Helm and the RCO All-Stars, with Paul Butterfield, Steve Cropper, Donald Duck Dunn, and Booker T. Jones. And two more studio albums went out. And in 1983, the band reformed without Robbie Robinson. Three albums were released. In 89, Helm and Danko toured with Ringo Starr and his all-star band. Joe Walsh, Dr. John, Nils Lofgren, Billy Preston, Clarence Clemens, and Jim Keltner were also on board. In 2000, Helm hosted a show called The Midnight Ramble at his home studio in Woodstock. These concerts earned money for Helm, who was diagnosed with throat cancer. The tumor was removed, but Helm's vocal cords were damaged. His voice was a harsh rasp, but slowly he improved. <clears throat> in 2007, Helm released Dirt Farmer, full up tones from Helm's youth. In 2009, Electronic Dirt went out. He also toured with the Black Crows. In 2012, Helm's wife Sandy revealed that Levon's throat cancer was back. And it had been for a while, and he was in its final stages and then he died at age 71. Elton John's song, Leave On, was about Helms, roughly. In 1994, saw the band inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. And tribute concerts for Helm are ongoing. Well, thanks again for being with me. Next up is Pick withers. Thanks everyone. Take good care.